Rolling on to articulation. As you can see, I've gone for a more extreme pose now. This is a pose that I've uploaded photos of my Mark IV in this pose many times. It's kind of a, a running style or jumping into flight pose, and I do really like it. There's a statue available at the moment. I can't remember who it's by, but it's very similar to this, and that's where I took the idea from. I found that the Mark IV could do it, and could do it quite easily. Uh, I would have thought this had the same joints, and it does to an extent, but I just find that the Mark IV gets into it a little bit easier than this one does. I don't know if it's the bulk, um, sort of the chest section on this one, or I don't know if it's bigger shoulder pads. I'm not really sure, because when you look at them, there doesn't seem much in it. Or I don't know if it's just a case that the joints are slightly, I don't know, um, slightly more extreme on the Mark IV. I really can't explain it, because you wouldn't think there'd be that much difference in the armor. Uh, I do like this pose, I've got to be honest. I think when it comes round it does look it does look pretty action packed. But I just think it looks more dynamic on the 4. Now I'll be honest, I can't remember what I give the articulation on the Mark IV. Uh, but on this one, I'm going to remember it's a robotic figure. So it's not a true type body. And like I said earlier, it is a work of genius what Octoys do. To be able to get the amount of articulation in a figure that's pretty much 100% plastic and... Uh, only has sort of a limited amount of joints. I just think the movement you can get into them and them still look like they're supposed to. I think it is it is awesome and I can't disrespect it. Uh, but if you compare it from one Iron Man to another, I've got to say that the Mark IV, for my money, articulates a little bit better. And from the little bit limited time I've spent with the Mark VII, I think the Mark VII does as well. So... Um, I'm going to go for a 4 out of 5. Like I say, it's not the most articulated figure in the world, but you've got to sort of you've got to sort of get some leeway because it is a robotic style armored figure. Now, I mean, if if you put yourself in a suit or armor yourself, would you be able to do that anyway? That's the uh, that's what you've got to really ask yourself. And I would think not because I don't think it'd be that extreme, but uh Octoys have managed to get it to do that. So like I say, the articulation, and I will say as well, the bits that are supposed to move, um, as i.e. the flaps and the um, the calf things, they all move nicely. Like I said, the only irritating part with the articulation is the pop-art fucking flare dispensers on the side of his hips. They really piss me off. The hands, again, work a genius. Awesome. Not much head and neck articulation on this, same as the Mark IV, but again, uh, they've sort of corrected that on the Mark VII, but I'll cover that in the review to that figure. So like I said, I've given it a 4 out of 5. Rolling on to extras and accessories. First show ya. Stood sort of in a punch pose, coming across with a right cross. Self balance, left leg forward. So yeah, going for something like that. Just as well, so I've got enough room to show you the stuff that comes with it. So what does he bring? Firstly, as you see at the moment, he's got the completely clean bits on him. So the first things I would say and the selling point like I've uh, banged on a couple of times would be the battle damage sections. Now, I always judge a figure on, you guys know, I keep a, I keep a bag of accessories. Let's just move over here. So I've got the other Iron Man there. I keep a bag of accessories like that. So everything that comes out of the box, or everything comes out of the box, stuff that I know I'm going to need, I get it out of the box, put it in one of them bags, seal it airtight, put it in me, uh, Mr. Tickle's trunk, and I, they're there for when I want to repose them and clean them. So when I've took everything out and I put everything on the figure, I look at the bag, what's left in the bag, how many accessories am I left with, what's come that's not on the figure now. Because, for example, this is a good one. Luke Skywalker... Can we a fucking shitload? Obviously a spare body, spare heads, blah blah blah, everything. If you look in Luke Skywalker's bag of the spare accessories that aren't been displayed there, you pretty much got his battle damaged arm and a few spare hands and the thing that goes on his battle damaged arm and nothing else. Everything you get with it is on it, other than the weather vane. So that 
it, I know it got massive extras because obviously it's it got massive points because it's obviously got the spare body, so that would be an extra. But this, when you put the stuff on him, you get imposed, you look in the bag and the bag's nearly full because you've got a spare head in there, you've got all these spare parts, you've got a spare arm and so on and so forth. And then you've got the bits that I don't even take out of the box because I know I'll never use them. So it does have a lot. So let's look at them in depth. The battle damaged faceplate, which I've said before, is really good looking. And that's on the head that the light shines through. See the magnets at the top there. We all know how the Iron Man head, heads work, so I'm not even going to fuck about with that too much. So like I say, it does have a spare head, because underneath that faceplate is the Tony Stark. Let's look that mic. Yeah, not got the light on on the camera like a dumbass. But yeah, got the Tony Stark head, so you do get your two heads. The battle damage section for the arm, the battle damage chest, got the clean version on. Nice options. Battle damage section for the legs. You've got the clean versions on. The completely fucked up arm with a, sh with a ripped armour. And the pop out laser thing. And obviously he's got the clean one on. You've got clean shoulder pads and battle damage shoulder pads. And then moving into here. You've got the rocket capsule sort of thing. The rocket pods that you can put on his lower arm. And then here we've got a pair of fists. One and the other one there, completely spread hands, and then relaxed hands. I've said before with the Iron Man figures, I'm glad they give them, but there's no need for them. But I am going to take into consideration, because sometimes the fist on the articulated hand don't look particularly natural, so you could use the, the proper fist, so to speak. Uh, so yeah, it is an option. Moving on, get the buckler. You might need to use that on certain parts. I did. I needed it for the shoulder pad because I thought I don't want to pull this and break it. So I did use the instruction manual on this. So yeah. You get the diorama base, which is nice, nicely painted. Only thing is because of the positioning of the boulders, you can't just have him really stood up because his feet don't look natural. So you would have to spread his feet like I've done. So his feet are actually off the base. But it is a nice uh, it is a nice piece. If you if you had that and the Iron Man stood side by side and you had two of these bases or a base and some of some type, it would give you a nice uh, a nice display. So yeah, and then you get the generic stand. So like I said, it leaves plenty in the bag. There's bits still left in the box. Um, I've got to give it a five out of five. Right, rolling on to value, and like I've said to you, I uh, I did a trade for this. Great guy called. Uh, Darren Arity, I would recommend anybody to do a trade with him in them uh, Facebook trading groups or buy from him because he does keep his figures in good condition. He were honest and he did ship fast, so you can't ask for much more. The communication were good, and like I said, um, got to know a really great guy. And like I said, I'm as honest as my word, and uh, I think he knew that coming into the deal, if what I told him were fucking honest. And like I said, I do like guys like that. There is guys about in them trading groups, like I've said, who, I don't know, they do a lot of talking and not much trading and they, they want to fucking have an opinion on everything or every deal or what a figure's worth. And I think sometimes I want to be aggressive and say, look, fucking mind your business and fucking do some deals, basically. Stop fucking spectating, stop kicking wheels, uh, get involved sort of thing. But I don't, I keep peace. Like I said, I've said before, only time I have any drama, it's always on my own channel because I'm... Uh, I talk for myself basically and uh, I just do it on my own page so yeah so like I said massive shout out to Darren I'm going to show you got Iron Man Fest going on uh, I'm going to cover the value like I said I did swap this for a customised Dark Knight Batman which basically were a, a standard DX12 Batman um, I did the modifications that I did on my own I also uh, repainted the eyes and it went with a Tony My Cape. So I valued that figure around 260. People might say that's a lot, but there's a lot of work goes into it, sort of keeping them hands nice and tidy and filing them down nice and so on and so forth. And like I said, the cape itself were worth at least 30 quid. So uh, a few people, well, a lot of people wanted it, to be honest. Um, like I said, they either had things that I didn't want to trade or they didn't want to pay that amount. And like I said, I held on to it and Darren come to me with this trade and I did it and I'm glad I did so basically I look at this as I picked this figure up for 
260, I would say, because that's what I value the Batman at, which is good. Anybody who's got the Iron Man Mark VI knows if you can uh, if you can get one for 260, you've had a good day sort of thing. So I'm buzzing on the trade, and I hope Darren uh, considered it a fair trade also. Um, so the value, to me, I've got to give it a 5 out of 5, because I would never have bought one at that price. So I've managed to pick it up and exchange it for a figure that I had duplicates of, so I'm happy with that. Uh, I would say, if you are planning on buying it, I probably wouldn't pay over £300 for an Iron Man figure, but I'm not that into Iron Man, which is a fucking stupid thing to say, looking through a, a camera lens at three Iron Man figures. But I'm basically looking for the best one, and then I'll probably get rid of one of them, definitely. Uh, maybe two of them, I don't know. But... Uh, like I said, I've got to give the value a 5 out of 5 because it's the value to me. If you picked one up around 140, 150 when they first come out, well done you. If you've paid somewhere fucking ridiculous between four and 500, I would say yeah, I don't think you're ever going to see that money back. Um, but like I say, if you've bought it and you like it, then respect to you. So I'm just going to basically go through... I'll say the overall score. I've given it a 27 out of possible 35, which is a respectable score because I'm marking these figures down. Uh, so yeah, like I said, good score, it is what it is. I'll just give you a quick look up and down each. Like I said, I always, on release, I preferred the four to the six. They came out about two months apart, I think. And I, I'd ordered both, I got the four, loved it, and cancelled the pre-order on, uh, on the six, thinking I'll use that money to get something else. Um, I've just always liked the sort of smooth lines and the sort of the chest i do prefer the round arc reactor this one obviously doesn't swap parts out or uh it does swap out the forearm rockets but not the amount that the mark six does but i have always liked it and i did like the tony stark head that come with it because i always wanted the option to pose it with helmet or without so yeah obviously it's a more redder color that one there's only really the the highlighted uh gold here and here and then on the uh biceps there so it's Mainly a red figure. Moving across this one, it does appear bulkier. I don't think there's much in it, if I'm honest. Uh, I don't know if it's because of the, the lighter coloured legs. It is gold, then highlighted silver over the red. Same up the arms. The battle damage that option, which I would always pose it with. If that's the strength of the figure, then go with it, Asa. So I do prefer that one battle damage looking. So yeah, show them in shot together. Buzzing, and then moving across, I've gone for the Mark Six, uh, sorry, the Mark Seven, and I've sort of sleekened it down. And I will, I'll make that clear in the review when I do that tomorrow night. Like you can get a, you get a bulkier option for the shoulders and bulkier legs. I've I've sleeked it down, sort of thing. But again, you do get parts that you can take on and off that one. So that one's right up to date. So they do look pretty good together. Don't think that I'll be collecting every Iron Man and having an all or armor because that's not going to happen. Like I say, I pretty much want to see them all so I can pick the best. Uh, so that's been another review by the Clipper King. Uh, I've scored it up for you. Like I say, I'll be rolling on next. The next review will be that. Again, I'll break that down into parts and then I'm going to review Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow together. And then I'm going to review Will Smith on his own, obviously. And then by then I'm hoping the uh, DID Chicago Gangsters here. So I can do that. And that will take me up to date. So like I can say, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, please like all the parts. Please leave a comment. Um, if you do want to add me on Facebook, do that. Because I find that I can answer people a lot easier through Facebook. But again, leave a comment because I view the I like the comments because it can start a discussion. Even if I don't answer them, somebody else might. So yeah, all comments and views appreciated, brothers. And thanks for sticking with me over the years. Uh, but for now, this is a Clipper King. And I'm out of here.